I know some of you swear by high-res files and codecs, but strictly talking about true wireless earbuds and mobile usage, I've done a quick test to show you why it might be a good idea not to use them, or at least not to obsess about them too much. But stick around and I'll also give some use cases where using high-res might make sense. So let's get started. Selamat pagi. Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my Bluetooth Codex comparison video. If you've been following the channel, you know I always recommend using basic codecs because it gives the longest playtime and lower latency too. But now I can share some data to back that up. So hopefully this can help you actually enjoy more of your music and stress less about the spec sheet. So before we start, my test rig this time is the Airfun Air Pro 4 that supports a lot of codecs. The only thing that's missing is LHDC and although it supports AdTex Adaptive and Lossless, I cannot test it with the MediaTek powered Infinix GT30 Pro here. So let me know and subscribe if you want to see them test it in the future. I'll do another one with a Snapdragon phone. But the good thing is this phone supports LE audio so I can show you for the first time ever LC3 codec in action so we can see if it's any more efficient or lower latency which is very exciting. Still on the LE audio side while well, we can test the real world performance the connection is actually still not stable in this specific pairing. Like I can hear constant micro stutters even though I'm only around like 30 centimeters away, phone is right in front of me and there's minimal wireless interference around my testing place. I did it in the same exact place for all the codecs and in the app, earphone themselves only recommend Samsung S24 and Google Pixel 8 series or above to play nice with the codec. So fingers crossed that support will expand in the future because honestly, it's about time. Okay, we'll talk about two things, latency and battery. And we'll start with battery first. Here, my methodology will be playing from a full 100% battery at 50% volume, ANC turn off, and record the amount of time it takes for the main master earbuds to drop to 80%. Then I will use the time between 90 to 80% because I found that it only takes six to 12 minutes for this earbud to drop from 100 to 90%. Then to give you a better insight, I will multiply the number by five to give you an estimated play time for these earbuds to drain half of its charge, which is the best I can do right now because usually earbuds will drain faster below 30% or sometimes 50%, just like how it behaves from 100 to 90. But as you'll see later, this should be pretty accurate if compared to the claimed number from Earfun. So starting from the basic codex SBC and AAC, I did the test individually and ended up with the exact same number. 10% drain from 90 to 80% in 63 minutes, which projects to about five hours and 15 minutes of playtime for half the charge. I'll say it again, this is the number from the master earbuds, which connects to both your phone and transmit to the other side. So it's always gonna drain faster than the one that only receives or call slave earbuds. And I chose to measure the master because if it dies, usually we just charge both anyway and take a break. So compared to the claimed playtime from Earfun, which is 11 hours with ANC off or divided by two, that's five and a half hours. We're only 15 minutes off, which indicates that the claim is pretty accurate. I'll chalk the difference to battery degradation because I've had this for almost a year now with light S usage because after the regular review, I only take it once in a while for comparison if needed. So you may actually have less play time because the battery degraded more. But let's check out the Aptex number now, which in my experience is about the same as Aptex Adaptive or Aptex Lossless, but we'll have to switch to a different phone to really know the difference between the three here and don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you want to see it happen. Basically, with standard app text here, we get 53 minutes from 90 to 80% and multiply that by five and we're looking at four hours, 25 minutes of playtime for half the charge. That's almost one full hour less than the standard codex. And honestly, I don't even notice any significant difference in audio quality from changing this codec alone. But before we discuss further, let's go through the other codecs first and Aldac in my experience consistently uses the most power. I tested everything on auto. I didn't force the maximum 990 kilobit per second bitrate here, which some might do to make sure they're getting the full benefit of the codec. 
at the cost of connection stability, of course. But anyway, we got 50 minutes from 90 to 80% and projected that's around four hours and 10 minutes for half a charge. Now that we are over one hour playtime reduced and on a full charge, that's gonna be two hours gone from the codec alone. Then if you use mic for calls or ANC feature, it's gonna drain the battery even more. What really surprised me though is LE audio or LC3 codec. We got 54 minutes from 90 to 80% or about four hours and 30 minutes for half the charge, which is a tiny bit better than Aptex, but still significantly below standard codecs. The problem is this is not even HD because it uses similar bit rate 256 to 320 kilobit per second like SBC or AAC. Then specific to the setup, we have audio stuttering problem, no Google fast pair. We have to unpair and repair the earbuds again for the first time just to activate LE audio. And I honestly don't think it's worth the effort, which is a shame considering the main selling point of LE audio is literally in the name. LE means low energy. But then here comes the second important part, the latency. And this matters a lot if you do mobile games, especially shooter games like Delta Force or any real-time games where any audio delay will be noticeable compared to video streaming because the phone can compensate by delaying the video a little bit. Here I'm going with a web audio latency test I've found to give reliable results similar to the PUBG latency test I've done in the past. So let's dive right into the results. Comparing the standard codecs first, generally a AAC has slightly higher latency than SBC, although that's been improving lately, especially on Android. And here with gaming mode turned on, which basically reduces the audio buffer. So trading stability for latency, you're getting 180 to 190 milliseconds which is much lower than the numbers without game mode, you definitely can notice the difference here in most games. Aptex and Aldac is not too far off without gaming mode, which is a good thing because in the early days, I've seen Aldac going all the way up to 500 milliseconds. So the chips on both our phones and the earbuds have definitely improved. But here's the thing. With gaming mode turned on, Aptex only got 260 milliseconds on average, and Aldac does not even have any gaming mode as the setting is blocked on the earphone app. LC3 on the other hand shines in this regard where it doesn't even need game mode to reach 180 milliseconds. And with game mode on, it lowers the barrier even more to 120 milliseconds, which is in line with my previous Soundcore VRP10 testing. Now, as a baseline to this test, I also did a wired IEM run connected to the Tungent Stargate 2 dongle here, which on average results in minus 50 milliseconds, which means the audio comes in first in the pipeline. Whereas in the past with my Poco F4 GT testing, I've got a plus 50 milliseconds-ish instead. And considering human error and variability in this testing methodology, I would say this is what I'd call zero latency. So what can we learn from these tests? First of all, in a battery constraint two wireless earbuds, I think 20% longer playtime is more valuable than minimal to negligible sound quality difference provided by these codecs, especially when it can easily get better sound by tuning the EQ to your liking, even with basic codecs. Or even better, look for earbuds with a better driver quality and tuning instead. This is something high-res codec could never magically fix. And also latency is generally higher, though Aptex Adaptive and Lossless might match the SBC figure automatically, which is very nice to have, but that's another topic for another video. The only outlier here is LC3 codec or LE audio. I'm glad that the support is here. It delivers on a lower latency promise, but we just have to work on battery consumption. Just like how increased battery life on standard codecs from four hours average to eight hours or more with the same 30 to 40 milliamp hour tiny coin batteries inside our earbuds. Having said that, high-res codecs are not pointless. It makes sense to be used when you spend considerable time and money to building your own CD quality or better music library. You know which mastering versions you like. Then the battery is also not an issue, like streaming from your phone to a wall-plugged receiver that connects to a pair of speakers or even wired IEMs. Using high-res codecs here, make sure you're streaming your music in the best wireless quality possible before you go to Wi-Fi, of course. And here, Aldac actually wins because it's the most universal codec that's accepted by pretty much all Android phones and most hi-fi receiver or digital audio players out there. Latency is also not an issue because it's just music for gaming. You can simply connect the cables. So did I convince you to use the standard codecs yet? Or what's your experience with
with Hi-Res Codex. Let me know in the comments, follow for more, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.